Senator, good to see you. Just on the back of that story, what, what's your reaction to that? Um, yes, I was actually speaking to her partner last night, Senator McKinn, um, so I knew about this sort of uh, yesterday, like early yesterday afternoon action, and I caught up with him last night. I found it quite disgusting. I'm really disappointed that uh, uh, Will Hodgman has a nice pushy job out there now, uh, working in Singapore, working for Singapore with trade, apparently. Uh, this was going on. They did an investigation, as per usual. This is what happens when you leave investigations in-house. Uh, it is shocking. Uh, he should have been sacked a long time ago. It should have been done out of these allegations. I don't know why he wasn't. Um, and she is right when you move them from one to another. And I see it happening in the military over and over again. Abusers get reposted and half the time, uh, then they get promoted as well. It is absolutely disgusting. This behaviour needs to stop. So it's not just happening in politics. It happens in the military. And I'm sure there are plenty of other institutions out there it happens in too. But if you think by moving these people around, that this sort of behaviour is not going to catch up with them, especially now, uh, I think we're terribly, terribly wrong. Well, OK, so the only reason why the, the, the gentleman has been moved on is because it was basically called out last night. Yes, um, yeah, well, he's been... Well, it was, it's been called out a few years ago and he should have been moved on then. It just, action should have been taken early on. He, not him just um, moved on and moved up through the Federal Liberal Party, but it should have been called out and the investigation that was supposed to be conducted by the State Liberal Party back then should have been done thoroughly and that, that evidence should have been taken and he should have been removed then. There is no place for that sort of behaviour yeah. in politics. So is it your hope, given the, the week given the last few weeks that we've had out of Parliament, Senator, that, that this kind of stuff will stop? And do you think it will? Or, or is that p perhaps looking at, at something uh, with rose-coloured glasses and, and, and you know, p perhaps it won't long term? Um, look, I think there's a big women's movement out there right now and I think you're going to see this is bigger than uh, them going out on the streets than when we uh, had to go out there uh, and rally to be able to vote. Uh, this is beginning some huge momentum out there. It is not going away. Look, you're never going to eliminate this sort of behaviour. But I certainly think as long as those women and myself stay out there and keep rallying about this sort of behaviour, um, and I believe things will get done, um, and I'm, that's what I'm hopeful for. It needs to stop and it mm. needs to be shown by example right from the very top of the politics so it flows on to the rest of society that we're not going to tolerate this sort of behaviour. And why do you think that, that this time will be different to previous times? I think that women are actually having the courage to come out and say what needs to be said. They're having the courage. They're putting their jobs on the line. And I think that you're going to see a lot more of this going on. And it's also people are actually starting to say, you know what, we believe what you are saying. Well, there is a lot more women in the workforce than what there has been for years and years and years. And I think uh, this sort of behaviour is just we now have the courage to stand up. Uh, we're going to put our jobs on the line if that's what it takes and that's what they're doing and they're going to come up and speak. And so they should and they are now being heard and listened to uh, by most people except for some. So, so are you expecting now, you know, more, uh, more investigations to take place on other staffers, not just Liberal staffers, Labor staffers as well and even other politicians as well? Do you expect to see more and more of this in the next few weeks and months perhaps? I... Uh, I think that as long as the women stay out there and they keep calling for this um, and more of them stand up and tell their stories, um, of course, there's yeah. going to be answers that are going to be uh, needed and um, so they should. Come okay. forward, have the courage, because it's the only way we're going to be able to stamp this out. Just on IR, Senator, a yay or a nay for you? Well, mate, myself and Rex Patrick, we've been left on the sidelines, so we haven't been involved with the um, negotiations, so we still haven't seen all the amendments that have been put up that are supposed to come up here this morning. Um, so I'm just, I, I really can't tell you a lot. Uh, you know, we put up a hand, we told the government we were prepared to go into negotiation weeks ago, uh, certainly when the Attorney General before um, he took his absence uh, his leave of absence. Uh, he certainly, him and his staffers were not talking um, to me or my um, staffers. They were not talking to Senator Patrick's. So God only knows what's going to happen in the next few hours. But yeah. um, you know, if they if they if they want to contact us, we're here to talk to them. Uh, we're prepared to go through the bill. Uh, you know, but right now we're sidelined. So until that happens, um, this is the position that we're in. Okay. So it's a no for now. 
Uh, well, mate, I haven't seen the amendments. Apparently there's amendments coming from One Nation. I believe Sterling Griff may have a couple of amendments. Okay. Uh, so I just can't see what's going on until all those amendments come through. I know there were some come through late last night. Uh, we'll be looking at them in my office this morning and waiting to see whether or not there's contact um, from the Liberal Party. OK, Senator, I've just got one more for you. So I've got the New South Wales Police Commissioner coming up on the show in a couple of minutes. It's, it's all about consent... Um, around sex, actually, and so, so he wants to devise an app where, where you have to actually enter your consent before something were to happen. I, I just, I don't know if whether you've been able to see it, but do you like the idea or do you, do you not think it's got any merit? <laughs> Oh, look, I think we're all, we're all trying to come up with some ideas here um, to help this situation out. I'm certainly not going to go have a go at the police commissioner. We've got to throw the ideas on the table. Mate, I'm not sure how you do that when you've um, been on party drugs and you're probably spewing in a bucket at the same time. You know, I've got those, some of you know, those young members ringing. I know I've got some of those young guys up there ringing me saying, what about our privacy? I just, look, the idea sounds great, but, you know, there's obviously going to be some sticky points. But, you know, that might be something we can chuck in the mix of other things that mm. um, we can do. But I think le teaching kids at an early age to say no and what consent means is a good start. And certainly, like I said, if you can throw this in the mix, so be it. But, geez, I'm not sure how you're doing that if you're giving consent yeah. when you can hardly even speak or hardly even stand up. All right. So, but anyway, yeah. the thoughts there. No, it is, and it's a good conversation to have you right about that. And Mick Fuller coming up in just a few minutes. Mine have to put that to him. But Senator yeah. Jackie Lambie, always good to chat. We'll talk to you again soon.